Hey, welcome to another C++ episode. I'm Mark Gingrass, and I'm going to talk to you about the modulus operator and switch statements. We haven't talked too much about either one of those, so I want to give you a quick practical example of why you would use it and what you can use it for in the future. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about what it is real quick, and the modulus operator is it's like a remainder. So if you had a mathematical expression like 15 divided by 3, we know that equals 5, but the remainder is 0, so it, it equals exactly 5. If you had 15 divided by 4, well, 4 goes into 15 three times, that would make 12, then you'd have a remainder of 3, 13, 14, 15, yes. So the modulus would give you 3, so if you did 15 modulus 4, you will extract from that the number 3. And I'll show you how we can use that in a practical example. It's very useful. Let's do that. Let's ask a user to input something. So let's create a, a space for them to input an integer value. I'm sorry. So integer user input. And I'm going to set that equal to 0. I'm going to initialize it because I'm not a big fan of relying on the compiler to initialize anything for me. I'd like to definitely know it starts off at 0. Okay, so let's uh, ask the user to input a number see out input an integer value and you can set parameters you know between 0 and 100 whatever you want to do um, I don't think it's gonna matter as long as it's uh, you know under 100 million or something like that so whatever an integer value can go up to we can Google that so we do that and we see in the user input now let's use a switch statement and tell the user if it's an even number or odd number. In fact, let's do let's use a function because we haven't been using functions uh, lately in any of these episodes. So let's create a function called. It's going to return a. Um, let's just return void. We're not going to return anything. So the function is going to be called, you know, even or odd whatever you want to call the function, but I'm going to take in a integer value. Remember, remember when, you, when you declare a function prototype up on line 6 here, you do not need to um, initialize the... you don't need to have names for the parameters. See this little um, light bulb here? You click on that and it tells you what the potential fix is. Oh, it's telling me there's no definition. I'm not used to Microsoft Visual Studio Community Edition. So it's telling me I have a prototype here, but I have no definition. So it's, pro it's not going to give me an error when I run this. It's just, it's just telling me, hey, you've got this. Now to go define it. Well, I was going to do that. Just not used to that type of error. So go down here to line 21, paste that in there, get rid of the semicolon, put in brackets instead. Now let's see if this thing goes away we no longer have that error okay so we have a definition for it now and remember up here in the parameter list of your function you do not need to name that variable um, because you're gonna name it down here in the definition and we are returning nothing from this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna print stuff out let me get rid of some of this white space so we can get more on one line for you okay so even or odd we're bringing in, bringing in an integer value called value whatever you want to call it because it's making a copy. Remember the difference between references and copies. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a switch statement. Switch, and a switch statement takes in a parameter as well. And what this parameter is going to be, it's going to be a mathematical expression. So we're going to do value modulus 2, and that's going to give us the remainder if you divide by 2. So that means it's going to be even or odd. And of course switch statements have the brackets as well and we do different cases. Case 0 we're going to say uh, so if there's if the modulus 2 is 0 it's going to be even. I'm going to put a backslash n and say even. And then I'll break out of that switch and we will do case 1 and do the same thing with odd. And we don't really need to put a break there because that's the end, but maybe just for 
Um, for the sake of it, we'll put a break there because we might one day modulus three and have different cases or whatnot. I don't see any uh, noticeable errors, and but we didn't call that function at all. So let's go ahead and just call that. We we got the input. Now let's call that function. So even or odd, bring in a value. It's asking for an integer value. Well, let's bring in with the user input. Okay, and that's it. So let's run that. Uh, hit F5 and we'll build it. It's going to compile, see if there's any errors, which who knows, there might be. Okay, input and integer value. I'm going to put in the number 23545, hit enter. It says odd. Let's run that again. Run every test case you can. Let's do an even number. There's a four at the end, so it should be even. Even. Okay, so I'm getting the idea that this is probably going to work. What you could do is you could put this in a loop and you can keep asking the user. Uh, from user input. We can reuse that integer value. We can just do a, um, how about we do a do while loop? So we'll put the, put everything in a do while, and while what? We'll just say when the user inputs, while well, user input does not equal something, does not equal negative one. We don't want to do negative one. So. The user can pretty much do anything except for negative one, and that'll break out of the loop. Let's run that again. Hit yes. No errors. That's good. Input and integer value, 21. Odd. Input and integer value, 22. Even, and so forth. Even. Now, we might put a new line uh, before input. And let's see if we escape out of this, negative one, and it's done. So the only thing different is you might want to put a either a backslash n before the input, or probably even better would be a backslash n after the even or odds. Try it again. A little bit better output. Okay. Anyways, that's just modulus operator and a switch statement in a function. So start putting all of these concepts together build certain things that are more practical than what we have been doing and get used to it because then you know the next couple of classes are going to start with classes which are a little bit more complicated um, to think about see you at the next episode